Okay, so notice that we have this sine of 2x. So when you're multiplying by x, that is a double angle identity. When you multiply by 2, I'm sorry. When you're multiplying x by 2, that's a double angle identity. So what we need to do is we need to do a substitution. We're going to substitute the sine double angle. So when you see a double angle in your equation, we have to do a substitution. So we know from your purple sheet that the sine of 2x is really equal to 2 sine x cosine x. So I'm going to substitute that in place of the sine 2x. So it, be, so it gives me 2 sine x cosine x. And then I have the minus sine x equals zero. So now what do you think I'm going to do? Because we had some equations like this. Look out, take out a GCF. What is the GCF? Sine x. So I'm going to factor out the sine of x. When you factor something, that's division. So I'm taking out or dividing out the sine x. So I'm taking out the sine x. So when I do, I'm left with 2 cosine x minus, and when I take sine x divided by sine x, that's minus 1. Okay, so now we're ready to set both of these equations equal to zero. So here's my first equation, sine x equals zero. Go ahead and solve that. Here's my second equation, two cosine x minus one equals zero. So take a minute and solve both of, both of those equations. Four x. So for this first equation, I would have to take the inverse sign of both sides, so that would tell me that x equals the inverse sine of zero. So go to your unit circle and tell me what angles have a sine value of zero between zero and two pi. And notice that this interval has a parentheses on the two pi. That means that we're not including two pi, but we are including zero. So what angles have a sine value of zero? zero and pi all right so that would be two solutions and when we go to the second equation we're going to add the one and divide by two And I take the inverse cosine, so x equals the inverse cosine of one half. Go ahead and go to your unit circle. And tell me the angles that have a cosine of positive one half.
So what angles on our unit circle have a cosine of one half? Pi over three and five pi over three. So that would be your four solutions to this equation. Any questions about how we got through this example? So again, if you see an equation that has a double angle, if that x or theta or alpha or beta is being multiplied by two, that's a double angle identity, and you need to do a substitution before you can proceed. All right, let's go ahead and copy down our next example, question number four. So again, we have a double angle identity. So this is my double angle right here. Now for cosine double angle, there's three choices. Okay, but we wanna look at the rest of your equation to kind of help you figure out which one is the, be is the better substitution. So I've noticed that I have a, co a cosine double angle and over here I have a sine squared. So I don't wanna introduce I want to find a substitution that uses sine. So I have three choices. So this third choice here is a definite no. Definitely don't want to use this one because if I use this as my substitution, then I'll have two different ratios. I'll have sine and cosine, and I won't be able to, be able to move forward with that. So the better option would be one of these. And what I wanna make sure you understand is that you can use either one, okay? They will both work for this scenario. For this example, I'm going to use this first one. So that is what I'm going to substitute in for my cosine double angle. So when I substitute that in, it becomes cosine squared x minus sine squared x equals sine squared x. Oh, thank you. That would have been bad because it wouldn't have worked. Okay, so now we need to solve this. And the reason why this one was a little bit easier to work with is because when I add the sine squared x to both sides, it cancels out. So I just have cosine squared x equals zero.
Eliminate your exponent by taking the square root. The square root of zero is zero. So you have the cosine of x equals zero. When you take a square root, you usually include a positive and negative. So it's technically plus and minus zero, but there's no such thing as plus and minus zero. So that's why we're just putting a zero. And now you take the inverse cosine and you go to your unit circle and tell me all of the angles that have a cosine of zero. Okay, so I, I boxed our double angle identity. And because the other parts of my equations involve cosine, I could use the one I used in the last example, or I could use this third example. I definitely would not use the second one though, because then we would have two different ratios. So this time let's use this one here. So I'm gonna substitute this in for my double angle. So, that's going to give me cosine squared x minus and then inside of my parentheses I have two cosine squared x minus one. So the first thing you want to do is distribute that negative. And then we're going to combine our like terms. So these are both like terms because they're both cosine squared. So it's like you, you have 1 minus 2, which is going to combine together to give you a negative 1 or a negative cosine squared x plus 1 equals 1 half. Subtract one from both sides. One half minus one is negative one half. Divide both sides by negative one. And that gives you cosine squared x equals positive one half.
Okay, so now we need to get rid of that square. So we're going to take the square root. So I have cosine of x equals plus and minus the square root of 1 half, which comes out to be, so the square root of 1 half is going to end up being 1 over root 2. So let's ex let me explain that re really quickly. If you have 1 half and you take the square root, the square root of 1 is 1, but 2 is not a perfect square, so it's going to stay. So you have to rationalize this by multiplying. And you get the cosine of x equals plus and minus root 2 over 2. So x is equal to the inverse cosine of plus and minus root 2 over 2. So even though we use different identities, Andrew, our four, you should have four answers. Your four answers, because the four angles that have a sine of plus and minus root 2 over 2 are the same four answers that have a cosine of positive and negative root 2 over 2. So our four answers will be the same. So now you go to your unit circle and you tell me the angles that have a cosine value of positive and negative root 2 over 2. And that would be pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. So regardless of if you use this one or the third one, this should be your final four solutions.